I'm a mom. I'm a mediocre mom. And what I want to share with you today is that by disappointing my children over the years, they ended up building a muscle that I didn't even know they needed. By having a mediocre mom, my kids ended up learning the most valuable lesson of all time: how to handle disappointment. <laughs> I don't know why parents focus so much of their energy trying to keep their kids happy. Disappointment is so much easier <laughs> and way more fun. This is how I do it. First off, I have way too many kids. I have four kids from three different mothers. Yeah, I like to think that makes me the Angelina Jolie of Southwest Portland. <laughs> I have two birth kids, one planned adoption, and one accidental adoption. Yeah, it happened. <laughs> Did you know that a sibling is the easiest and number one way to disappoint your child? A brother or a sister equals a lifetime of disappointment. <laughs> When you're a parent, there are so many ways you can let your kids down and teach them how to handle disappointment. The easiest way is embarrassment. Look at my hair. I call this preventative parenting because if I do it, my 19-year-old daughter won't get caught dead doing it. <laughs> Next up, I'm wearing a crop top to the mall. Oh, and when I drop them off at the mall or school or even the high school, uh, I like to wait till they're a few few feet away from the car, and then I'll do the mediocre mom farewell, where I start honking the horn and waving goodbye. I love you. You're so handsome. <sighs> Disappointing. <laughs> oh, and I'm driving them around town in a minivan. Picture Meals on Wheels meets Hoarders. My kid yells from the back of the van the other day, "I'm hungry! Can I eat this?" He found a Lunchables in the back of the van. Who knows how long that's been there? Lunchables. That's a food without an expiration date. <laughs> I don't know which is worse: that I feed that crap to my kids or that they love it so much. What I want to do is encourage parents to embrace their mediocre self. And teach their kids how to handle disappointment. It's like weightlifting for the muscle kids need for handling things. As a mediocre mom, I keep my house very messy. Oh yeah, we live real close by. You know, we're right over on the corner of Pothole and Homie. Yeah, it's really bad, you guys. I want to invite Martha Stewart over to my house just so I can watch her stroke out on my floor. When my kids' friends come over, it's like, "Come on in, Spencer. Oh, watch out for Martha's body. Just step over her, and don't trip over that knocked-over trash can, and do your best not to stub your toe on all of my lifelong dreams." It's just. <laughs> not only am I a mediocre mom, I'm menopausal. This is super disappointing to my kids. <laughs> mediocre menopause mom. I can go from happy to crappy in less time than it takes you to say too late. <laughs> I can't volunteer at their school anymore because I'm no longer capable of pretending to like other people's children. <laughs> their friends' moms are thirty-somethings. You know the ones with their one baby and their waist. They bend over in those low-cut jeans and show off their cute little tattoos. Do you know what shows when I bend over in my low-cut jeans? My icy hot patch. <laughs> and those younger moms—they're working out to look that good. They're doing mud runs. I'm doing mud pies. Okay, and I'm wearing my favorite workout shirt. It's a Nike swoosh that's upside down, and it says, "I just can't." <laughs> Do you know what it takes to maintain this look? <laughs> Level 786 on Candy Crush. <laughs> See, now I'm even disappointing you. <laughs> ah, 
When you're a parent, you can look for life lessons that will teach your kid how to handle disappointment, like when your kid loses an ice cream cone. Don't run over and comfort them and buy them another cone. This is a prime disappointment happening. This is your teaching moment. Don't replace the cone. They need to know that they can handle it. What could you do instead? Be like mediocre me. Take a picture. Oh, bummer, that was like the best. <laughs> Take a picture. <laughs> It's a family classic. <laughs> If you think about it, oh, now I'm going backwards. See this? If you think about it, Disappointment is a natural part of parenting. Uh, it's right up there with the most common parenting style, hypocrite parenting. Stop yelling at your sister! <laughs> <sighs> And if it's that sister's birthday, don't buy her siblings presents so they don't feel bad. Everybody feels bad when it's someone else's birthday. <laughs> they have to learn how to handle it. The reality is, when you're an adult, no one is going to buy you a present when it's someone else's birthday. <laughs> Can you imagine? Hey, I, I picked up this candle so you wouldn't cry at Michael's 50th. <laughs> The way I see it, we all get a chance to be special. It just might not be your day yet. And please, 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 say no to your kids. Not. Yes, but, or maybe, say no. I even made hearing no fun for my kids. Do you guys remember the Elmo song? Mm, every time I said no to my kids, I sang it. No, 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 mommy song. <laughs> They hated it. But no is a part of life. They need to get used to hearing it. It's all part of that disappointment workout. Let's start building that rebound muscle in kids. If you provide opportunities for your kids to practice handling disappointment, they might use that rebound muscle when they're young adults. Be like mediocre me. Do you know how many times I've shown up somewhere on the wrong day, at the wrong time, with the wrong kid? My kids don't even bat an eye anymore when I make a mistake. I knew I was doing something right when I overheard my teenage daughter talking on, to, on the phone to a kid we forgot for carpool. Oh, come on, get over it. Do you know how many times my mom has forgotten me? <laughs> And if you really want to build up that disapp disappointment rebound muscle with your kids, play favorites. Yeah, in my family, everyone thinks the youngest is the favorite because he gets away with everything. He's not my favorite. <laughs> I'm tired, and I just don't give a crap anymore. <laughs> you never gave me a gun. I didn't give him that gun. Santa gave him that gun. <laughs> If I would have said that word, you would have washed my mouth out with soap. That is entirely true. However, he did use that word properly in a sentence. <laughs> that frickin' door won't open. If you work at using disappointment as a parenting tool, your kids will surprise you, and they'll even use that rebound muscle when they're young. Someday, you might find yourself at a crowded Target toy aisle at Christmas time with a three-year-old. Yeah, it's crowded, and we're shopping for the cousins. There are a lot of cousins. So this three-year-old is watching new toy after new toy, flashy new video game after flashy new video game go in the back of the cart, right past his little face, and he is freaking out. It's crowded. You're overwhelmed. He's overstimulated. So do you let him pick out a little something for himself so that he'll quiet down? Oh, no, you recognize a chance to practice handling disappointment when you see it. So you tell them the truth. Honey, these toys aren't for you. And then you break into that magic disappointment anthem. 
You can't always get what you want. Oh yeah, the shoppers are looking now. You can't always get what you want. And to their amazement, your three-year-old stops freaking out, he smiles, and starts belting the song out with you. <laughs> Come on, everybody. You can't always get what you want. Picture it, a three-year-old in a toy aisle at Christmas time, not getting a toy, smiling and singing. You just won't find a more beautiful example of handling disappointment than that. <laughs> Thank you.